The Guardians become thieves in this true story of a $10 million bank heist in Medford, Massachusetts. Unlike typical heists, the perpetrators were police officers who exploited their positions to execute a seemingly perfect crime. Our story unfolds in 1980s Medford, a prosperous city of 60,000. At its heart stood the Depositors' Trust, the city's largest bank. Citizens entrusted their valuables to its safety deposit boxes, secured in a fortress like vault with 50 centimeters thick reinforced concrete walls and cutting-edge security systems. The mastermind was Gerald Clemente, a police captain. His journey into corruption began on his first day, paired with a senior corrupt officer named Crasher. Gradually, Gerald integrated into a circle of corrupt officers, discovering how easy it was to abuse his position for personal gain. Despite his corruption, Gerald maintained a strong public reputation, even receiving a Medal of Courage for capturing an armed gang leader. This duality extended to his personal life a family man with a secret mistress. As Gerald's rank rose, so did his boldness. In 1980, he decided to undertake his most daring heist yet robbing the depositors' trust. His closest accomplice was Tommy, another corrupt officer. They had previously conducted small operations together, including stealing and selling police promotional exam papers. Gerald and Tommy recruited three more team members, Joe Bangs, another corrupt officer, Francis O'Leary, a former gangster, and Bucky Bart, a professional thief skilled in electronics. Bucky's expertise was crucial in disabling the bank's sophisticated alarm system, a process that took two months of careful experimentation. The team chose Memorial Day for the heist, reasoning that the holiday's festivities and fireworks would mask any suspicious sounds. The bank's three-day closure provided ample time to operate undetected. On the night of the heist, Tommy patrolled outside in a police car, while the other four entered a neighboring shop and broke through to the space above the vault. They drilled holes in the ceiling, placed dynamite and used sandbags to muffle the explosion and direct its force. After detonating the explosives and cutting through remaining iron bars, they entered the vault. To their dismay, the inner safe contained only $60,000 most cash had been sent to the Federal Reserve due to the holiday. Undeterred, they focused on the safety deposit boxes, returning over the next two nights to complete their work. In total, they stole approximately $2 million in cash and $8 million worth of jewels and gold. They divided the cash immediately, but left the jewelry with Joe for later sale on the black market. The FBI investigation that followed initially yielded no leads. The thieves had been careful leaving no fingerprints or traces. Gerald even provided an alibi, claiming he was with his mistress, Barbara, who corroborated his story. Months passed, and it seemed the case might go cold. However, the thieves' reckless behavior led to their downfall. Tommy and Joe, spending lavishly on cocaine and women, got into a violent argument over Joe's misuse of the stolen jewelry. Tommy shot Joe, leading to his arrest. When state police searched Joe's car, they found stolen jewelry and cocaine. This discovery reignited the investigation. During Tommy's trial for the shooting, Joe unexpectedly admitted to the bank heist and implicated Tommy. The FBI reopened the case and Joe agreed to provide details in exchange for immunity. They also re-interviewed Barbara, Gerald's former mistress, who now admitted that Gerald had returned home covered in dust on the night of the heist. In court, Barbara testified about Gerald's corrupt nature and his talk of a life-changing operation. Gerald, Tommy Francis and Bucky faced trial, while Joe testified against them. The once respected police officers and their accomplices were sentenced to 30 to 40 years in prison. Their perfect heist, undone by their own actions, left them facing the prospect of dying behind bars or being released in their twilight years. This true story serves as a stark reminder of how those entrusted to protect can become the very criminals they're meant to catch. It highlights the corrupting influence of power and the ultimate consequences of choosing greed over duty. The Medford Bank heist remains one of the largest in American history, not just for the amount stolen but for the betrayal of trust it represented. It shattered the community's faith in their guardians and exposed the thin line between protector and perpetrator. In the end, the thieves' downfall came not from brilliant detective work, but from their own hubris and recklessness. The case serves as a cautionary tale about the dangers of corruption and the far-reaching consequences of moral compromise. As we reflect on this extraordinary event, we're left to wonder how many other guardians might be tempted by the riches they're meant to protect. And how can society ensure that those tasked with upholding the law don't become its most dangerous violators? 
The Medford Bank heist reminds us that true security lies not just in thick walls and advanced alarms, but in the integrity of those we trust to keep us safe. It's a lesson that continues to resonate, challenging us to remain vigilant and to hold our protectors to the highest standards of conduct. And that's the end of our story. But before you go, don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell. See you in the next episode.